This week in the Adventures of Batman, we got to see the Batman vs. Superman trailer in full fucking IMAX. It was glorious. And Gotham got a little bit better. They got a lot better. I'm Eli Wilbur. David Troutman. And this is Waiting for Batman. This episode of Waiting for Batman is called Just F*** Already. Welcome back to the Fan Cave, everybody. As you know, this has been an awesome week for Bat fans. Before we get into our Gotham review, which is a better review than the last one, I will say that, we want to talk about the IMAX experience. As you saw in my previous video, I reviewed the trailer that dropped. A lot of mixed feelings from me on this one because I loved the trailer, hated the fact that it was leaked. Yeah. Well, here, here's what was jacked up was, I got a text from you. You texted me and you're like, Dude, they're gonna show the trailer at IMAX on Monday. Do you want to go? I'm like, yes, that, that's my day off. Let's do it. Let's go to IMAX and see the trailer for Batman Superman. And then it was leaked. And then the official one came out. So I wrote back. I was like, dude, are we gonna drive like an hour to IMAX <laughs> to see what we've already seen? And yeah. <laughs> but that's what happened. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. Going back to the leak thing, I'm gonna. Just, I want to say this. I'm gonna say. I'm saying this to the man who leaked this trailer. Fuck you, man. You ruined uh, an experience for so many fans. For people who wanted to go and 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 feel like they were seeing something before anyone else got to. You have no right to take that away from us fans. Just because you're some kind of anarchist I guess who thinks that they that oh I, uh, why should they get to see it first look that's an experience man that, that, mm -hmm. that's something if you didn't like Man of Steel or if you're not into the into this movie that's your problem but if you're a true fan you're gonna wait you're gonna wait that extra few days to go see it in IMAX see it in in the glory that it's meant to be seen yeah. in and then it's going to get... It's, it, it was meant to get released the very next day. Yeah. Like, a lot of work went into contacting IMAX and sending them the footage. Exactly. And sending out the emails to get the tickets. And, you know, cutting out all his time and money. I mean, we saw it for free. IMAX had to put aside, <clears throat> you know, 15 minutes or whatever. Right. To let 100, you know, fat nerds in. <laughs> you know, just sneaky guys in to watch this. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, you know, and 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 to be honest, that really did affect kind of the the. It, I, it was the, that the, much less special. It really was. I don't regret a single moment of it, even though it got leaked. I still am glad that we went yeah. and did it. It just when we went, there were less people than I expected. I I was expecting a line <laughs> all the way through downtown. Well, we were told the IMAX was sold out. We were told that and it I was think sold, it's sold got out. Got to seat like what five hundred? It seats a lot of people. Yeah. That's a big Huge theater. Huge amount. And. It wasn't even half. If you reserved a ticket and decided not to go because you already saw the trailer online, I'm still going to say that you missed out because, look... You should feel bad. <laughs> and we'll tell you why. A, you get to see an IMAX. Like, uh, watching it on your phone or your, your computer is not the same as watching that amazing, glorious yeah. trailer in full IMAX. Well, especially we found out that a couple of the shots were shot... With IMAX cameras. With IMAX, exactly. Specifically for this. Why would you want to miss an experience like that? I get it. It's only two minutes, whatever. But here's what else you missed out on. The trailer was verbatim what we saw on the internet. We were all kind of... Once we kind of realized that that's what we were seeing, we were A, a little let down, but B, still excited. It, 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 was, it was kind of mixed emotions. Mm -hmm. But then something happened. Something magical happened Ooh. at the end. So after the, the, the Batman symbol envelops the Superman symbol, we cut to another shot. And it's a shot of Superman show, showing the pose. It, it was more no. Yeah. And then he kind of, you kind of see him motion yeah. out of out of frame. And then the next shot is Batman doing the exact same thing. And then the following shot... In his big shot, battle gear. Then the next shot is you know a wide shot. And it's the two coming at each other. And then boom, we go to yeah. Batman versus Superman Dawn Justice. The intention was... Oh, A, you get to see this first. B, you get to see this clip that no one will get to see online. But now what the intention ended up being is, well, you didn't get to see it first, but you got to see something no one else has gotten to yeah. see yet. And they threw something else special at us. For those who attended, everyone leaving got to pick between a Batman and a Superman poster. The best part? He didn't get one and, and and I got the other. These are both mine. He's got his own set because we 
showed up and uh, and like more than half didn't. We got to have both. Yeah. Like at other IMAXs where everyone showed up, people had to choose. We got to get both of them. So that I mean. That was pretty magical. And if we had to pick one, like, you'd get Batman and i get Superman, but we'd have to, like, switch custody on weekends. Exactly. We, it would just look I, I would take him to get ice cream and go to the zoo to be the cool dad. They would just live here when they're with me, just kind of sitting doing nothing. Yeah, and, and they, I would take him and have a good time. They and they're like, we want to live with David. Even before all this, before they even showed the trailer, they gave us another treat, which, I, to me, what my, my suspicion is, they only did this because of the leak. So... In a way, thank you to the leaker mm. for, for giving us... I mean, us they only had like four days to do all this, though. I, mean, that, that <sighs> I know, so maybe I'm wrong, but uh, they gave us a little postcard and, and they, they handed that to us as we went into the theater. And they said, write your email on the back of it. We're going to send you passes to go see the movie a week early. At IMAX. At IMAX. So, <sighs> these two guys, we get to see Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice a week before... It's released. We get to see a special preview screening of the movie. Now, what I'm really hoping for is that the only people who are going to be in that theater are the same people we were yeah. just in the theater with, as well as maybe press. Yeah. It was a fun time. We got some awesome posters. We get to see the movie early. Yeah. So that's our review. That's what we thought of the, the, the IMAX experience. We just wanted to share that with you real quick and, and tell you we were happy with it. We yeah. Were, we were very happy awesome. with it. Well, let's move away from waiting for Batfleck, move away from the cinematic universe, back into Gotham, our one of our favorite TV shows. Got good again. Yeah. Last week, we didn't have the best things to say. I mean, look, it's not like we tore it apart. We didn't tear it apart. There was nothing to tear apart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the last night, it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, there were some great things about it. No Fish Mooney. Start oh, out we didn't even talk about this was a good episode, possibly because there was no Fish Mooney. You You're like, what? why am I enjoying this so I much? <laughs> Let's let's go from the beginning. Show opens Batman versus Catwoman. Yeah, pretty that's much. what it is right there, man. Batman. You see, you see Batman do this. You see Catwoman do this, and they come together. <laughs> and then Zack Snyder's there. And Zack Snyder's like, hey, oh hey, uh, that's one thing we forgot to mention. Zack Snyder did an intro at the beginning, right. and then in the middle of the uh, trailers for the IMAX experience. But uh, whatever. Oh, yeah. Bruce and Selena, yeah. great interactions. It's and and it's all the points that we know that they're gonna keep arguing about later on which is why they can never be together that's what's so cool is it's their their conversations throughout the episode it's it's what we've seen as as, them as adults characters. yeah you know, once I, they actually are batman and catwoman whenever they are fraternizing mm -hmm. you know at a museum or whatever it's the same public it's the same dynamic and it's just timeless that was phenomenal uh great interactions great acting i mean look We've got to see Bruce kind of act out a little bit and be kind of angry sometimes, but seeing her yeah, this yell is the first at him, time we really saw it. That oh, I it gave me chills because mm -hmm. I really I really enjoy her. I I think she's a great actress. I again, man, I I'm pleasantly surprised how much I'm enjoying her character. Yeah. We're back to kind of the ogre storyline. The ogre is this character. He's been going around. Seducing women, bringing them back home, making them cook him lamb, and then he kills them when the lamb is burnt. Yeah. You know, because it's just not working out. Uh, look, if you can't cook, you don't deserve to be with the guy. Yeah, yeah. You need <laughs> good lamb. I want to see Christopher Walken yeah. play, the play, the ogre, like, play the ogre. Play the ogre. This <laughs> lamb. It's too much. I, it's too warm. <laughs> it's cooked too long. <laughs> we go back to GCPD. We're we're trying to solve the case. So Edward Nigma. He's in the forensics room and he's stabbing the hell out of something. Which, spoiler alert, yeah, <laughs> it's a little telling of what he does at the end of the episode. He's stabbing the hell out of something. You're seeing what appears to be guts. You know, it's not something superhuman because it doesn't have that right sound. Yeah. And we all know the sound of something getting stabbed. Yeah, we all know that from personal experience. Yeah. We pull out and he's stabbing the hell out of watermelon. <laughs> and there's like seven more. <laughs> Stabbed to death watermelons on the it's, like on the autopsy table right. too, which is kind of unsettling. Yeah, like, it's it's very unsettling, but it's, it's adorable too because yeah. they just we've grown to love this character, which makes his story so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Moving on, you know Leslie Tompkins, she's in the bath time, a little sexy time there. That was, I don't know, that was too much suspense to. Uh, it, yeah, and it, and they it, did the fake out with the friggin' cat. Yeah, or it's what you. <gasps> Who's in there? And then and the cat runs from under the bed. Right. It's like, I've seen this in so many so bad many horror bad movies, movies from the last yeah. 25 years. It was a waste. It was a waste of time because then it was mostly exposition. It was 
Gordon, explaining to her the whole ogre thing, stuff that we already heard in the last episode that we're just catching up people who missed the last episode on what was going on. Mm -hmm. Wait, waste time on that exposition. And then we're supposed to believe, oh, you know, the ogre's gonna go after Leslie. Yeah. She She's under threat. And then we cut and the ogre seducing some other young woman and it's supposed to be a big surprise and it's Barbara Keen, Gordon's previous girlfriend. But we already knew that from the trailer before. Yay! That was a waste of suspenseful music. Yeah, yeah, they could have used that, you know, Hans Zimmer ripoff <laughs> horn anywhere else. Right, but they used yeah. it there. Oh. I like this crazy slutty Barbara, to be honest with you. And not in a perverted way, but just in a way of like, it's interesting. It's We're seeing her transform. Like, she went from just being this like wholesome girlfriend to the police yeah. commissioner who were like, oh, she's going to be the mother to Barbara. She's going to be Batgirl's mom. Yeah. That's adorable. She kind of looks like she could be Batgirl. I'm interested to see where it's going. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even think the writers really know where they're going with it. I think uh, I think they kind of, they're I think they bookshelved her for a while. <laughs> right. And now they figured out what they want to do with it and bring her back. So yeah. now I'm excited to see. Because I, I couldn't stand. I couldn't stand her before. I, I couldn't stand the, the, the storyline with her and, and Montoya. Yeah, that was it was weird. Yeah. And she was getting whiny. I was kind of hoping she was going to die. Could they still kill her off? Very possible. Right. But I'll, I'm actually interested in <clears throat> whether or not she dies now. And I want to see how that works out. Speaking of uncomfortable sexy moments, Penguin and his mama. Yeah. The... the <laughs> Said a new low. The, the, the mouth kiss. Which it wouldn't be that big of a deal if we hadn't seen their interactions before. Right, like her... Like the, the bathing scenes that they've uh, done and how close they just always are. Look, at, at this point, uh, I'm expecting to find out that they've made love. Oh. New fan theory! This isn't the Penguin. Oswald Cobblepot and his mom, they have a baby, comes out all deformed like Danny DeVito, and then they make it live in a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I cracked the code! I'm like the gay guy from The Imitation Game or whatever it was. I didn't see that movie. That's what it came up this year, right? I only watch comic book movies. Was it Benedict Cumberbatch, right? Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch? Beneficial Cucumber. That guy. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> We're here. The show went way over there. Um, Tim Burton got a hold of it. <laughs> Oswald Cobblepot is simply Oswald Cobblepot 1. And his, his, his son his is Oswald Cobblepot. His son is Oswald Cobblepot 2. That's how f up these people are. yeah before i was like oh the writers of the show are gonna they're gonna see our show and they're gonna be like these guys should be writers on the show they're gonna see our Did show i just wrote like, it you, these guys will never write for gotham or anything batman yeah. ever <laughs> they're gonna make batman and robin <laughs> if they get their hands on the comic books and then of course that's how moroni gets to penguin is mm. by seducing his mom and it's not like a sexual seduction it's just a charm you know older lady you know and he he ends up kind of telling her yeah. what her son's been up to and it kind of strands the relationship and it's that was a groovy scene um though. it was, was a cool. it was a great scene especially when moroni pretty much he reveals his hand and that was cool that yeah. was awesome i can't wait to see how this whole thing plays out with moroni yeah. spoiler alert here's what happens to edward enigma he finds out that chris kringle his love interest which i still want to figure out the significance of that name is that kind of the whole like the whole thing with fish mooney like they named her fish mooney because it sounds super comic booky and kind of vintage so they're like oh what's another cute comic booky name we can come up with for a love interest oh how about chris kringle I mean, this sounds like a 66 it, villain. It sounds like a 66 villain. You know what? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's adorable. I, I still need to figure out. The verdict is not in yet. Ed finds out what's going on between her and the Seth Rogen-looking cop. He approaches Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen laughs in his face. And then... I think we saw him snap. We've been seeing being pushed for a long time. Right. But we've never seen any harmful tendencies to him. Right. And then this was the point where... We see that face. We hear that sound. He's, this is it. He's, yeah. he's, not, he's not going to put on the costume yet, but I mean. No, 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 But now he is the Riddler acting like Ed Nigma <clears throat> from right. this and point out. Right, and eventually we'll see them kind of slowly merge together. Exactly. Where Ed Nigma, his love for riddles, will merge with the, the psychopath. Mm -hmm. He meets the cop in front of Chris Kringle's house, that, you know, to kind of warn him, say, get out of Gotham. I know what you're about to do. Cop punches him yeah. and is about to beat on him. Ed gets up and stabs him and keeps stabbing him. With assumingly is the same knife that he, was, <laughs> he, he used on the watermelon, watermelon knife. It's the watermelon knife. The watermelon knife. I mean, he stabbed him once. 
he was like, you know, he, oh, he, he didn't like it. Oh, dear. Right. He stabbed him again and then yeah. just went ballistic. A lot of elements in this episode. One of the elements that I, I again, you know, I just want to see more of this. Selena and Barbara are kind of roommates. We kind of find that out. And they even say, roommate? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really adorable. And it, again, it makes me want to know more about Barbara. What's her role going to be in the future of the Batman universe? Yeah. I want that as a sitcom, man. Mm-hmm. Like, let's do a Gotham <laughs> spinoff. <laughs> and it's the adventures of Barbara and Selena. And it's them living together as a sitcom. Yeah. We're throwing a laugh track. When okay, or if no live audience, a, a laugh track, absolutely. <laughs> but but I mean, make it like married with children. Like, oh, just absurd. Totally. Like, just adorable. Every time yeah. Barbara walks in with a short skirt, just went, <laughs> And they even had a line in this where... Like, you, so Bruce, uh, he sends a bunch of clothes over to Selena to wear to the charity ball. Uh-huh. And she picks up her shoes. She goes, am I supposed to wear these? And I just heard, ha, ah, ah. right. ha, that, ha, the last And then Barbara, goes, we got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's already set up for a sitcom. And I was work so you're like, oh, I'll tell you. Right. Meow. <laughs> Being on the internet, there's a lot of negativity. And we try to be more positive than a lot of these people. There's a lot of people that just like to critique just hate and, to and hate, hate, to yeah. hate and try to show what they can do. But damn, uh. the photograph of what the ogre used to look like when he was born, he was a deformed child. Right. And his dad's under the impression, oh no, my son is deformed. There's no way he can seduce women to kill them. Here's a picture. And and they hide the picture for a little bit. You right. see Gordon and Bullock, they each have one. And you're, you're white and the whole time to see like, oh, what does he look like? What does he look like? What's the deformity? Pre-plastic surgery, we find out. And then it shows his face, and they clone stamped a butt on one side of it. Right. And they just did that a bunch of times. Yeah. It just looked really... F- it looked... Ugh. Like okay. they were trying to go for like an elephant man thing. Mm-hmm. But it, it just looked like like a bad Photoshop where they just kind of smear yeah. everything. Especially after the build-up, like... The oh, build-up. deformity. Yeah. Right, right. Like, oh, God, he, maybe he looks like an ogre. You know, maybe yeah. he looks like something nasty. And he did. I mean, it was. it's not like he was an attractive no. dude before, but it was still very... You could tell it was rushed. Speaking of the ogre, at the end of the episode, he brings Barbara home. Barbara... Is off her rocker. She's a freak. She's a, she's a freaky lady. Because we go, I mean, we, I've already seen this on Twitter. Hashtag 50, sh- yeah. 50 Shades of Gotham, man. She finds his kill room. And she she's into it. Yeah. She, she has a, a sexy look I mean, look on the, her they're face. walking. It's playing like this industrial music. It's like, it looks like a Rammstein <laughs> music video. <laughs> There's something wrong with this chick. And we get to find out next week. What happens? Yeah. Because that's where it ends. A huge step up from last week. Really excited to see what happens in the net last two episodes. Even more stoked that we got to see Batman vs. Superman on the IMAX screen. That was fantastic. So it's been a good week for Batman. But hey, we're going to go home and watch some more Batman. I think so. <laughs> so yeah. uh, until next time, guys, I'm Eli Wilbur. David Troutman. And this has been Waiting for Batman on Villainous Entertainment.